This video demonstrates the do-while loop. What we're going to do is modify a program that already exists. This program calculates a tip amount, and the tip percent must be above zero. So let's first compile the program and play with the program a little bit to get kind of an intuition of the behavior. So what was the price of the meals? So we'll say $100. And apply what tip percent? 15%. OK. The tip would be $15. That's right. What if it was a $50 meal and we wanted to apply a 10% tip? So it'd just be $5. That's right. OK. Now the program does have a description that the tip percent must be above zero. So let's try a $100 meal with a negative tip, negative 10% tip. And the program outputs invalid tip percent and apply what tip percent? OK, negative 5. That's still invalid. How about zero? Uh, zero is valid, apparently. And the tip in dollars would be zero. OK, so how does that correlate back to the code? So there are two variables, meal price and tip percent, and their data type is both doubles. The first output is asking, what was the price of the meal? And we saw that at the beginning of every program. What was the price of the meal? What was the price of the meal? What was the price of the meal? That's right. And that user inputted value for the price of the meal is stored into meal price. Next, the program asks the user to apply what tip percent. And we saw that as the second line of each of the programs. Apply the tip percent. And the user inputted value is stored into tip percent. Next is this while loop. And if the tip percent was less than zero, then you enter the while loop. In the first two times you ran the program, we did not have a tip value less than zero. We had 15 and we had 10. So this while loop would have been skipped. Instead, the program goes down to this output for the tip in dollars, along with the calculation of the tip in dollars. And we saw that in the first time we ran the program, was tip was 15. Second time was tip of five dollars. Okay, now in the third time we ran the program, we had inputted a negative tip percentage. Here we had inputted negative 10. So that negative 10 would have gone into this while loop because the tip percentage was less than zero. It was negative 10. And so we had an output which was invalid tip percent, and then the program once again outputs the question apply what tip percent. So we saw invalid tip percent and then apply what tip percent. And then we inputted a new tip percent, which in that case was negative 5. Negative 5 is still less than 0. So once again, the program outputs that was invalid and prompts the user to input another tip percentage, in which case we entered 0. 0 is not less than 0. So the while loop would exit. And the program outputted the tip in dollars, which was zero dollars for a zero percent tip. That's pretty reasonable. Now in this program, there's two lines of code that are identical. This line of code, apply what tip percent, and this other line of code, apply what tip percent. And that's not a clean way of programming. Simply, if we were to update what the prompt is, let's say we updated the prompt to be enter a tip percent, it has not updated in both locations. We've only updated in one location, so we'd have to remember to update in the other location as well. Otherwise, we end up with inconsistent output to the user, and that's confusing. So what do we do instead? Well, we use a do-while loop. On the one hand, a while loop checks a condition before entering the loop. On the other hand, a do-while enters the loop, then checks a the conditional expression. So a while loop checks before entering the loop, and a do while checks after entering the loop. Let's convert the while loop to a do while. I'm going to highlight the while loop with the expression. I'm going to cut and enter the word do. This is the beginning of a do while. We have the do, the opening curly brace, the closing curly brace, and then I'm going to paste the while, as well as add a semicolon at the end of the while. So now I'm going to save, and then we're going to compile and execute. What was the price of the meal? That's the same as above. We'll say it's $100. Enter a tip percent. We have enter a tip percent from that guy. It will say 15%. So then it enters the do part of the do while. 
where the program outputs an invalid TIFF percent. We see that here. And then the program prompts the user once again to apply a TIFF percent. And that's seen here. So if I apply, let's say, 15, then we get the correct TIFF percentage. So now we can actually just delete these two lines of code. They're extraneous. They don't add anything. And we can simplify the program by doing so. So let's recompile, execute, $100. It's telling us it's an invalid TIFF percent. Well, that's not always true anymore. So we're going to delete that line of code. OK, so I'll just put in 15% to let the program finish. Calculation is still correct. And after we had removed the invalid prompt that had previously said invalid tip percentage, let's see what the program looks like. Compile and execute. So if it's $100 and a 15% tip, then we get the correct tip percent. But what if we input an incorrect tip? put negative 15. Then it prompts once again for a tip percentage. So if I continue to enter negative numbers, then it continues to ask for a tip percentage. So then I'll just give them a legitimate 10% tip on $100 is $10. And we can see the program has been simplified by using the do while. It's also a little bit easier to read. All right. Thank you.